that's the thing that I think is so telling about apologists. If there was a good answer, you would have led with that. If you have to reframe a question three different times to get to a version that you can answer, that's showing the reality more than anything else. It's indefensible. Welcome to MindShift, I'm Brandon. Today is another Tuesday takedown, not of people, just of bad ideas, bad arguments, and bad apologetics, which is the part we're looking at today with Frank Turek. Frank goes around and does presentations on college campuses. In fact, one of my first videos was responding to Frank Turek's biblical presentation on why slavery is not endorsed in the Bible. He's dead wrong about that. See my video here. But he also does these live Q&A sessions, and that's where a lot of his content comes from. And I've been meaning to respond to these for a long time because it's not just the incorrectness of his answers. It's how he answers them and how he's unfair with the people who are asking these questions. So I'm going to show you an example of that today and we'll probably turn it into a series. So if you have a catchy name for it, please let me know. But I also want to take two minutes really quick to talk about Sunday's video. If you want to skip this, that's fine. Here's the timestamp for when this video will actually start. So Sunday's video, we'll do this really quick. I got some comments and I agree with them and they're from both believers and atheists saying, hey, this wasn't your best. Some of the Christians didn't quite put it that nicely. And for those of you that didn't see it, my Sunday video was God needs therapy. Ha ha. I thought it was a cheeky little title. And here's 20 examples of what we consider to be good mental health practices and 20 times in the Bible that God does not do that. And I think that the main concept there stands very well and that 17 of those points were pretty darn solid. But there's two or three verses that I was, I don't want to say lazy on, but that I rushed. I should have done better. I should have found a better example that fit tighter. I should have at least explained the greater context if I was going to use a verse that was so on the fence. And so I apologize because it drives me nuts too. When I see atheist videos that say things that, are just untrue, making a case against Christianity from some exaggerated or out of context case, and it doesn't need to happen. We have enough real ammo. This Bible is chock full of real errors, real contradictions, real harm, and real evidence that this God is not all good, all powerful, all knowing, or all loving. So again, I'm not going to make excuses or give a bunch of examples. I just want to say I should have done better. I'm sorry. I endeavor to do better in the future. And my goal is to be as upfront and transparent with you guys as possible as we go through what I know is really tricky material that can be interpreted and used in a lot of different ways. And I do think that atheists have a responsibility not to make weak cases against against the Bible or this God or this religion when so many good ones already do exist. So enough of that. Let's get to today's video. To set the stage, Frank has done some kind of probably presentation on this college campus. I'm not sure. And then they get into Q&A and he gets this question. Let's just look at the question first. If God chooses to allow the devil to continue to exist, knowing he is going to tempt us into sin, is God making the devil his agent? This is a great and difficult question. This is something that I've played with on the channel quite a bit, and I've seen so many different apologetics try to tackle that ultimately, I think what this young man is saying is, isn't God actually responsible, right? If he made everything, and if he has this foreknowledge, knowing who Lucifer is and what he will do, what he will become, and what he will then do to God's creation, isn't God's allowance of that, especially under the belief that the devil is not just passive, but that he is actively working against the believer, tempting them, causing doubts, deceiving them, infiltrating our minds, our hearts, all of the things that we are told can happen. Again, doesn't this make God ultimately responsible. I have lots of thoughts, but let's see what Frank says here. Well, God is in control of everything. Ultimately, he could take the devil out. But when people say, why doesn't God take the devil out? I could ask, we could easily ask the same question to the person asking the question. Why doesn't God take you out? Right? Because we do evil every day. In fact, years ago, I was at Michigan State and I, I knew there was a pretty militant atheist in the audience because he sat through the entire two hour presentation like this. I mean, he didn't crack a smile once, and I had some pretty good jokes in there. Anyway, when it was time for Q&A, his hand shot up. He was on this side of the room, and he said, If there is a good God, why doesn't he stop all the evil in the world? And I said, Sir, that is an excellent question. Maybe because if he did, he might start with you and me, because we do evil every day. If God were to stop all evil at midnight tonight, would you still be alive at 12.01? Okay, I had to stop myself from just cutting in so many times to explain what I see going wrong here. Let's just rehash what is the initial question. And it seems to me that the person asking the question is saying, since, not if, since in this worldview, Satan has been allowed to exist and God knows what Satan will do, doesn't that ultimately make God in cahoots with Satan or utilizing Satan as an agent? But Frank is going to first give a glossed over answer. Yeah, well, God's in charge of everything. Okay, that's not really answering the question. If it was, it would sound a 
a lot more like yes than no. I think a new rule for these apologists should be answer the yes or no question, yes or no. Then you can explain. But instead he rewords the question and it's similar, but it's different enough to allow him to answer it in a way that is accusatory. So he repositions the question with why doesn't God just take out the devil? That wasn't the question. But now that he's reframed it, he can put it back on us. Taking the responsibility off of God and putting it on us, the sinner, is like 101 apologetics. Well, if God took out all evil, maybe he'd start with you. Talk about avoiding the question and avoiding responsibility. Now we're victim blaming, essentially, and comparing this young college student who's probably just been living their life the best that they can to Satan, but he's not going to stop there. Because let's depersonalize this a little bit. Let's move it to a third party conversation that I can control more. You know, once a long time ago, and I'm going to paint this atheist in a bad light, this militant atheist, militant atheist. Why? Because he didn't laugh at your jokes. He wasn't impressed at your material. That makes him a militant atheist. And now he's been able to take the train of questioning and reframe it a second time here for our third iteration of this question. And now it's if there is a good God, why doesn't he stop all evil in the world? See what he's done? He's removed Satan from the equation. Now it's just about evil and God. It's slight. And you might think I'm nitpicking. I don't think I am. I'm not saying that Frank is some mastermind manipulative genius, but I think that he is naturally going in a direction that's going to serve him best and make this question much different than how it started and much easier for him to answer. And so how does he answer this question? He says, well, it's a great question because if he did, he might start with you. Again, we get the blame. We get the turning it around onto the sinner. And he's careful to put himself in there. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. You do evil. I do evil because we're all just so broken. And we've completely like, just stop and think. We completely did not answer the question at all. The original question is, isn't God just using Satan if he keeps him around as some agent for his desired will? And that answer seems to be, if you're just asking me, Yes, if this God were real, his allowance of Satan to be around and infiltrate our minds and hearts and do all of these things would be a tool in God's tool belt. If he didn't want it, he wouldn't allow it. Yeah, but Brandon, free will. Does it actually take away free will if God defeated Satan completely? Right, we could still choose to sin. We could still choose to reject Jesus. We'd just be doing it with all our faculties. We wouldn't have some blinded eyes from the devil. Satan is an unnecessary component to the free will argument, and to the requirements of having a God in general, or a people who are created under him. He does not need to be here past his initial bringing sin, the fall, etc. Okay, now God can banish him and not let him play games with his creation anymore, that supposedly he wants to not fail, that supposedly he wants community and communion with, that he desires for everyone to be saved and be with him in eternity forever. If I tell my kids, I love you, I want you guys to make the right choices, and I want you to be able to be with me, and then I purposely make sure that they are going to be surrounded with the worst kind of friends and abusers possible, that will lead them down every bad path, that will constantly try to get them to do the wrong thing. That's actually an error on free will. That's stacking the deck in the other direction. So not only would getting rid of Satan actually be fair, it would actually make God's whole, I've given you free will so you can justly choose me thing, make that make a lot more sense. But getting back to Frank's answer here, I find it fascinating that you can get a question asked specifically about the devil and end up with an answer that has nothing to do with him. And I feel bad for these kids, you know, there's probably a line, they feel rushed, there's other people wanting to ask questions. Frank is very good at what he does. He controls the conversations very well. Sometimes in these videos, you'll see the kid ask a second question or say, well, what about this? And he does his whole song and dance again. And then it's time to move on to the next person. And the comment section goes wild. And all the believers say, look at this atheist that got owned, which I hate this kind of terminology. It should be about the information. It should be about the data. It should be about the scriptures. It should be about the contradictions. It should be about the logical fallacies. It should not be about who said it best, who had the best quip, who redirected the best, who got the crowd on their side. Those are just tactics that have nothing to do with finding the truth of this. And I'm off on another tangent. Sorry. The next thing that really bothered me was in his answer, he kind of reframes it a third time. So we get our fourth iteration and he says, if God were to stop all evil at midnight tonight, would you still be alive at 1201? He has concocted this huge over-exaggeration this total black and white fallacy, totally removed from the initial question, that somehow looks like the militant atheists are demanding that God removes all evil. That's not what was said. That's not at all what is on the table here. It's just not a thing. Maybe it's a topic for another day. Sure, I think that God could have made a world with no evil, at least an all-powerful God. That would mean he could do that. But again, 
not the question of the day. What a manipulation to go through these four evolutions of the question and turn it into, why doesn't God eliminate evil? Because he might eliminate you. That's not an answer, Frank. There's a whole lot of things that God can start eradicating to make things better before he has to worry about little old me or the guy who asked the question. He can start with Satan, which is what this whole thing was about. And then maybe he can just erase certain concepts. Like what if it never, ever, ever was even impossible to enter into the human psyche of hurting a child? One of the biggest evils I see in the world is the lack of resources going around. Bam, 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 bam. That's how many people just died of starvation. God could eliminate famines and droughts. That's evil by his design. Racism is a horrible evil, and God being all-knowing knew it would be the case. So if we're really created and we didn't evolve, which explains the different ethnicities, shouldn't God have just created us all as one race who looked alike? It just would immediately eliminate that evil. But not only did God purposely create multiple races, he has a chosen people setting the stage for bigotry. How many women have suffered evil from good Christian men. Maybe God could have added a few verses about their absolute equal worth. Again, if we're just going to go back to the drawing board and make these huge, ridiculous hypotheticals, God doesn't have to eliminate all evil. He can just do better the first time. We're the ones having to look back. God saw all this coming, could have done differently, should have done differently, didn't do differently. That's the evil. God says so himself. What is sin? According to James, knowing to do good and not doing it is sin. That should be its own video because I could talk about that forever. God could have done better, didn't do better. Sin. There are so many evils in this world that only exist because of the decisions he made on days one through six of creation. That natural purposes explain very well, but that completely fail when they're supposedly the perfect creation from a perfect, all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God. It just can't work. If it could work, Frank would have better answers. That's the thing that I think is so telling about apologists. If there was a good answer, you would have led with that. If you have to reframe a question three different times to get to a version that you can answer, that's showing the reality more than anything else. It's indefensible. This is kind of by trade what a lot of apologists have to do. Again, I don't think they're all evil manipulators who are just purposely deceiving. I think they really believe what they believe, many of them. And the only way to actually defend is with these loops of logic and the circumnavigating of initial questions and the reframing and the finger pointing and the victim blaming and the what about isms and all of the things that are so much more than answering a yes or no question with yes or no. God is using Satan as an agent. Yes. See, it's simple. You just have to admit the truth. I don't understand why that's so difficult. Why? Because it paints your God in a bad light to use the most evil being of all time. We already have proof of it. Look at Job. Tell me God wasn't using Satan as an agent in that. And it's funny because when it fits them, Christians are fine using this kind of reasoning. The example with David when he takes the census, which leads to 70,000 people being murdered by God, by the way, there is an obvious contradiction between two different books that tell the stories. In one, God incites David to take the census and then punishes him for it which is insane. In version two, Satan incites David to take the census, and then God punishes him for it. And when you call out that contradiction, or at least when I did, one of the main comments I got back was, well, both can be true. God did it through Satan. Oh, God uses Satan as an agent then. Again, if God is giving Satan permission to do the things that Satan otherwise could not do without God's permission. This is not free will, and it is God 100% doing these things and using Satan as an agent. Like, it's very, very clear. Frank knows his Bible. He should be able to give this same kind of answer, but he doesn't, and he won't, and most don't because it doesn't sound good, because it kind of makes God seem like an evil dick. So we have to keep that separation. Satan has to be the bad guy. God's up here. He's trying to make things better. He's sending his son. He's sacrificing stuff. He's making allowances. He's building mansions, blah, 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 blah. It's all so silly. Again, None of it's real anyways. And if it was real, according to the Bible itself, we'd have to come to grips with these things. But many Christians can't. So we reframe them and we point fingers back at the sinner, the evil of humans. Okay, then no Satan needed until the next time you need to insert Satan to excuse all of this other behavior. Like it's, oh, it really is quite irrational and frustrating. Okay, all done. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Thursday, we are doing Ezekiel, the secular Bible study series. Hopefully sometime this weekend, we'll get to episode five, of Dissecting the Divine. And then Sunday, we have kind of our second part of this little therapy series in which we look at 20 reasons why God makes a bad therapist. Until then, keep 
Thank you. I wanted to personally thank my top tiers of support, my Iconoclast, GVI, Jacob, Jason, Joe, Oliver, and Sean, my humanist heroes, Jared, Carolina, and Christy, my atheist advocates, Anne, Elijah, Rock, Sparky, and Todd, as well as all of my secular scholar patrons. If you believe in the mission of this channel or you just enjoy its content, please consider joining these fine patrons. Thanks and have a great day.